Hey everyone, so today we're going to go over the updated version of EK, which is meant to be a follow-up video to the previous one on how to put EK together on a budget. What we're going to go over today is how to take that path of building and look at some of the things that you can do to improve the build, such as getting ailment immunity, stun immunity, phasing, and so on. And then we're going to also look at some hard upgrades for the build, such as fitting in awakened gems, or swapping over to a bow and a quiver and so on. And hopefully with all this, we should be able to take your EK build from doing pretty decent to doing really, really well. So why don't we get into it? The way all this is going to be structured is more so just going over all the different topics. So feel free to skip around to like the parts that you're interested in. If you want to know about stun immunity or ailment immunity and so on, rather than have the whole thing be one consistent thing. So why don't we get into it? The first thing I want to discuss, since this was something that a lot of people asked, was Ali, how do you fit ailment immunity in this build? This feels great. But ailment immunity is absolutely murdering me. Well, there's only one real option and that is Storm Shroud. This jewel was added into the game this season and this is probably one of the best additions they've added in quite a long time. What this does is if you are 100% avoidant to shock, you are avoidant to all ailments. It's amazing. Now you might ask, how do you get 100% chance to avoid shock? That's not really a stat that people go for. Well, there's three ways to really do it. The first way would be with just getting two 50% chance to avoid being shocked jewels. This is a roll on abyss jewels only and finding 50% jewels that are decent is a little bit hard to do, but this would be the easiest way to do it without changing much. In this build, we have a lot of just like random jewels that don't really have any purpose other than just being raw damage or stats or whatever. So these should be pretty easy to remove. On top of that, you're probably going to be running a Stygian. So you can put one of your Abyss Jewels in there and then just swap out one of your other jewels for it. You can try and find Fractured Chance to Avoid Being Shocked. And if you find Fractured Chance to Avoid Being Shocked, then it's really easy to craft a nice jewel. But at the same time, those are kind of expensive. Your second option is going to be getting one of these and recrafting your belts to have Chance to Avoid Being Shocked on it. You can get up to 60%. And the essences for this are extremely cheap. And with this, you can get a much lower roll on your jewels. And if you didn't have a very decent belt in the first place, this gives you a chance to upgrade into something very meaningful that you'll keep for basically forever. You wouldn't replace a chance to avoid being shocked belt until you swap over to a headhunter or a mage blood. And then with this, you'd only need one jewel and then you can look for a lower roll. Typically, all the ones that are 50 are kind of shitty they're not very good so you can look for you know a 40 or 45 or whatever you need to match your belt and hopefully have more options on finding good jewels for the lower percent chance of avoid being shot the last option which i'm simply just going to go over since i've had a few people come by and say ali how do i put this together with a mage blood or should i go for a mage blood or how would this look with a mage blood well if you don't have a mage blood you can roll chance to avoid being shocked as a suffix, good old bog moss. And this with 70% increased effect from an Akinling orb with a 15% increased effect suffix gives you, I believe, 102% chance to avoid being shocked. That's the minimal amount. So if you do have a mage blood, you can get shock immunity on a single item. And then that means you don't need shock avoidance on a bistual or on belt. Next up, let's talk about stun immunity. How do you deal with stuns in this build? Well, the easiest way to do it would be to simply swap your major pantheon over to Brian King. I really wouldn't recommend this and I would use this as your last resort simply because the rest of Brian King doesn't really do anything. We're going to be ailments immune as it is. So... All of it is effectively useless. Lunaris and Solaris are amazing defensive layers to have. And even our Akali is good if you're doing something that's chaos based, such as lights or blighted maps. Because of that, you really don't want to give up on the other three choices. So this would be your last ditch efforts. Your other better options is to go get a pair of boots with 80% chance to avoid being stunned on them. You can either get this while you're crafting a better pair of boots, or you can get this enchanted onto your boots after. If you want to run it yourself, it probably won't take more than an hour or two of lab running. Or if you want to pay a lab runner to do it for you, I don't think it's more than a divine to put this on your boots. Now this is only 80%. In most cases, it's going to be good enough. And yes, it's not going to help you on bosses, but I feel like on bosses, being stunned here and there is kind of rare. And I don't think it would impact you that much. 
usually if you get hit by a boss you're probably gonna either die or get very low in the first place and they don't really like spam me with abilities so as i have a few cases where not being sending me on a boss might suck this should pretty much take care of all of it and it'll make for example sims if you're doing sims or mapping very very comfy if you do want to get 100 percent chance outside of bosses you can also choose to path over to asylum or to path over to one with evil and then pick up the mastery which gives you 20 percent chance to avoid being stunned this would make you stun immune for content where you're consistently killing something every four seconds and again same thing as ailments because people have asked you can also get stun immunity through a mage blood by just getting chance to avoid being stunned during effects and with a 70 percent roll on a 25 percent prefix and this will also give you stun immunity that is another option the last option to go over is the new invocations you can get a unwavering stance invocation on your sanctified relic and this would give you stun immunity but the only problem with this is you would not be able to evade anymore so grace doesn't do anything for you and the problem with dropping grace is grace is a massive defensive layer you really don't want to drop grace or if you don't have grace yet you really don't want to brick your builds to not be able to run grace if for some reason you don't want grace then this is a good option and then this would allow you to run herald of ice and vitality instead of grace for about a 10 percent damage increase and a lot of regen moving on to phasing there really isn't much to say here other than getting phasing on kill on abyss tool or you can just simply run a quartz flask both options are good i would honestly prefer to run a quartz flask it's gonna make getting to spell suppress cap a lot easier or if you do want to go with a jewel maybe potentially consider finding a fractured avoid being shocked abyss jewel and then rolling for phasing on it assuming it's the correct base this would be a very easy way to fix both phasing and ailment immunity in one item but it might be a little bit hard to find a fractured jewel that is cheap next up i want to go over some important gems for this so the absolute biggest upgrade you can make is simply getting 21 ek ek is a spell spells gain about 10 percent increased cps per level 21 20 ek is maybe around 40 c 50 c it is stupidly cheap if you don't have one please pause the video and go buy one please but outside of that Getting Awakened Gems for EK is going to be a massive power increase. Both Swift Affliction and Deadly Ailments are about the same price. They're both around 2 div at level 5. You do not need level 6 since Skin of the Lords pushes it to level 7 already and there's no breakpoint to level 8. But these are about 2 div for about 7% DPS increase, which makes them a very good value proposition. Awakened Burning Damage is about 2% better than Cruelty, and it's only about a div. I would get this after you've gotten everything else, as the DPS per div spent is not very good here, but it is a slight upgrade. And then at level 4 in power, this is going to be about 8 to 9 div, and it's going to be another 10% DPS increase, as you're simply just giving EK another level. I would most likely go... So with Affliction, Deadly Ailments first, then get your level 4 in power, then get Burning Damage to maximize how much DPS you're getting for the amount of money you're spending. On top of that, we should talk about all the auras. If you don't have 21 auras, you should go consider looking for them. 21 Hatred is about a 5-6% to 6 DPS increase. Herald of Purity is about a 4-5% to 5 DPS increase. And then Determination, Grace, and Discipline are all about a 1% EHP increase. You do not need quality on any of these. Quality doesn't do anything. And the only alt quality you might consider is Determination. Divergent Determination is a pretty big EHP increase but the only problem with it is it's very expensive so you might want to consider this as a further down the line upgrade rather than something to get immediately but this would give you quite a lot of added tankiness for free. Herald of Ash, 21 Herald of Ash doesn't actually do much other than make your explosions a little bit bigger. What we're interested in here is quality. The quality on Herald of Ash is about a 3 to 4% DPS increase and you could get a 2020 Herald of Ash for about 30 to 40 C. This is a very cheap and very big upgrade you can make. For Malevolence and for Divine Blessing, neither of these do anything special at 21, so you do not need to bother 21. What we care about here is getting Divergent. Divergent is worth about a div and it's about 1% increased DPS over a normal malevolence. And then lastly is Anomalous Flame Surge. So this will give you a chance to Scorch. And because in this build we are stacking a lot of ailment effects, that means that this Scorch is going to be a pretty big Scorch. For me, I believe it's a 15 or 16% Scorch pretty much every time. And this gives you quite a big boost. It's anywhere between 10 to 15% extra DPS on bosses, specifically depending on how much ailments effect you have. Anomalous Flame Surge is about a div to two div. Pretty costly 
upgrade but if you want and if you're struggling on single target damage specifically this is a very good purchase and i would probably get this pretty early on next up let's talk about something that i don't think a lot of guides really mention but in my opinion for ek this is probably one of the most important things you could do and that is simply leveling up your character as you can see this tree is pretty point starved. It's kind of hard to give up much on this tree other than potentially the recoup wheel, which honestly, in my opinion, I would not give up. Recoup just feels too nice or a health wheel somewhere. Because of this, you're going to need a very high level to make EK feel really good when you're min-maxing and leveling should be something that you should probably put a priority on. In my opinion, you don't necessarily need to hit 100, but if you hit 98, 99, that will make EK feel a lot better. And if you don't feel like leveling yourself, you can always go to TFT and just buy a 5A carry. Currently, if you're about level 93, 94 or so, if you want to get boosted to 97, 98, it's going to cost you anywhere between 4 to 5 div, if even that. Runs are 6 per 3 div, which is pretty much the standard rate for most seasons. So you can consider that an upgrade for your character, spending three, four, five div to get to 97, 98. You can go to 99 or 100, but 99 and 100 are very expensive. Simply going from 98 to 100, I think is somewhere around 10 to 15 div, which is not too expensive, but for two points might not necessarily be worth doing immediately. For each point on your passive tree, you can effectively say you're going to get about 1% EHP per points that you're putting into defenses and you're going to gain about 2 to 3% extra DPS per points that you're putting into DPS on average. So if you're level 92, 93 and you're trying to go to level 100, for example, you gain eight passive points, which is either 8% increased EHP or anywhere between 16 to 24% increased damage. I can't overstate how point hungry this build is and I would really recommend looking into at least buying a few levels if you have some spare div left over. While we're looking at the past tree, let's talk about cluster jewels. So in terms of the large jewels, the large jewels aren't gonna change. Disorienting display, prismatic heart, sadist are pretty much best in slot for this build and you want two of them. On top of that, two empowered envoy purposeful harbingers are also best in slot. So nothing here is gonna really change. What's gonna change is on your other cluster. Ideally, you want brush with death and fan the flames. Before it was Brush with Death blowback, since blowback was the best DPS point to put next to Brush with Death. But we want to put Fan the Flames here so we can go to our gloves and remove the spread and instead pick up Fire Damage Over Time Multiplier, which is going to give us substantially more DPS. These are fairly expensive. They're around 8 to 10 div. They're kind of volatile, but this might be something you'd want to look forward to to gain another 5-6% DPS or so later down the line. On top of that, for the other cluster, you have a few options. You can either go for another Brush with Death blowback. That would give you two Brush with Deaths, and with two Brush with Deaths, you should feel really comfy. That's going to be a nice defensive layer. But if you want more DPS, the single best thing you could do is to get Astonishing Affliction and Over shock since we are scaling shock really well in this build since we start at the 15 percent shock increasing the effect of our non-damaging ailments is a very very fast way to gain dps overshock is worth about four percent and astonishing affliction is worth about six percent dps so if you don't care about having two brush with deaths this is what i would recommend to pick up instead while we're looking at the passive tree one more thing to mention is i did tell everyone to pick up this es leech node this is very good and without this, EK feels kind of mess since not having leech can sometimes put you in a position where you just can't really gain any ES. And this basically makes it so you never run out of ES along with a brush with death. But we're effectively wasting a point on just picking up leech, which kind of sucks. Because of that, we eventually want to buy a spell damage leech as ES synth implicit jewel. The base for these is about four to six div. They are very, very all over the place. And you might get substantially different prices based on what time of day you look at these. There are not too many of these on the market, but getting this effectively gives you one passive point back. And getting one passive point for four to six div, in my opinion, sounds like a really good proposition. As soon as you get this jewel, you can craft it however you want. One thing I'm going to mention is we are going to need one mana reservation efficiency of skill roll somewhere. So you can potentially recraft this for RMR and maybe a damage stat or some health or whatever you want. If you do whatever you want with this jewel in the end, you just need the synth base. And then from there, the rest is up to you. Some of the things to quickly go over are sanctified relics. So there's a few that you might want for this build, but anything really 
really works. Think about it and consider your options. There aren't that many relics that aren't good for this build. Even a defensive sanctified relic is okay. The most important relic I would say if you can get your hands on one is a fire exposure relic. This allows you to drop the fire exposure from your gloves and that role shares the implicit slot with spell suppression. What this would allow you to do if you can drop this and put spell suppression as an implicit is it allow you to spell suppress caps substantially easier since with a bow and a quiver you can't really get spell suppression which is going to make capping a substantially harder and it's why i pretty much say to drop spell suppression until much later down the line on top of that you can also get mana reservation efficiency this build needs a very specific amount of RMR to fit 21 Grace. And if you do have a mana reservation efficiency relic, fitting in 21 Grace will be substantially easier and cheaper. Aura effect is always good too. It's just generic damage increase. Chance to avoid being shocked is a very niche relic, which you might not think is very good. But with Storm Shroud, it effectively makes it so you don't need a roll on your Abyss Jewel. These, I believe, roll anywhere from 40 to 60. So you can get quite a hefty chunk of your chance to avoid being shocked simply just on a relic some other things that aren't listed here is just generic stuff like ignite steel damage faster damage over time multiplier fire damage over time multiplier if you have some sort of generic damage increase those are fine to use as well but these are the noteworthy ones for this build next up let's go over something that is very important ali how do you swap from a wand and a shield over to a bow so the first thing to mention is Ask yourself a question. Do you need explosives in your build? If you need explosions, for example, if you're doing Sims or if you're doing juice content or whatever, then wait to swap to bow until you can afford Oriaf's end. If explosions aren't that important, or if you don't really care about them for the content they were doing, then you can swap to bow as soon as you have around 10 to 15 divs saved up. What we're gonna be looking for is a redeemer bow with a damage over time multiplier and fizz is extra cold damage. As soon as we have those two rolls on a bow that is isolated, we can easily craft the rest onto here and finish up our bow. The whole point of this bow is to give us as much increased damage as we can for our ignites and to effectively make it a six link or a setup. We want plus one socketed gems and plus two level of support gems to make our level four enlightened become a level seven enlightened. It's going to be very important because without having a level seven enlightened effectively, we will not have enough RMR to fit in grace into our build later. In terms of crafting the bow, it's pretty straightforward. What we want to do is we want to get physical damage as extra cold and damage over time multiplier on a bow with nothing else on it. You have a few ways to go about making this. So your first option is to alt spam, which I would not recommend as this would take around 10,000 alts or so to hit this combo. If you want to go for the best and slot pre-explosion bow for this build you would want to have tier one and tier one but i would not recommend it as the weighting is very low it's kind of difficult to do that tier one tier two or double tier two or even a tier three is more than enough to start with a bow and you don't need something insane outside of alt spamming you could also do harvest with reforge cold and this will give you damage over time multiplier fairly quickly or the last option is to fossil craft this with etheric and frigid fossils and a two socket resonator as soon as you have this bow your craft is effectively done it is pretty easy to finish it from here all we would do is we would go down and put multi mod onto our bow and cannot roll attack modifiers this fills up our suffixes and if we exalt slam it we have an absurdly high chance unless we get unlucky and get a redeemer prefix to get plus one socketed gems as soon as plus one socketed gems is on there you would remove your crafted modifiers re-put multi mod on there and then simply just put fire damage over time multiplier as a crafted mod and plus two level of socketed support gems as a prefix as long as you have the damage over time and fizz is extra cold base the rest of this is pretty much guaranteed again unless you get absurdly unlucky on the prefix and don't hit plus one socketed gems if you want a written guide on how to make this there is one in the gear upgrade section but at the same time if you don't feel like making it on your own you can simply just click on the trade link provided here and just simply be able to buy one these range from anywhere between 5 to 15 div the market's a little bit volatile in them depending on how much people are looking for them but you should be able to find something fairly reasonable for a decent price on top of that we need a quiver so this quiver is going to always be a vile arrow quiver simply because the physical damage is extra chaos is really good for this build as shaper of flames doesn't care what your damage is all of it becomes ignites on top of that we're going to want a warlord item that we're going to be awakening together with either a shaper item or a redeemer item the two roles we're looking for here is physical damage as extra fire and physical damage as extra cold the physical damage as extra fire is warlord exclusive while physical damage as extra cold is either redeemer or shaper exclusive there's not much to really say here other than you're going to take a 
Vile Arrow Quiver. That's either a Warlord base or a Shaper or Redeemer base. And you're going to awaken it together with the other to put together a physical extra fire and extra cold quiver. What you're hoping for here is a high life roll and ideally some decent suffixes. These are super RNG to make, but they're also pretty cheap. So if you want to slam a bunch of them together, it's relatively easy to, and I believe it's anywhere between 100 to 150 C per attempt. And if you don't want to do this, there's another trade link to be able to buy one. At this point in the season, so many of these have been squished together with the attempts of finding a good one that there's a lot of very decent ones for very cheap. So you can pick up something for 100, 200 C, or if you want something a little bit better with a little bit of a higher life roll, maybe a div or two by just going to a trade link. As soon as you have your bow, you are ready to swap over to Grace. So what's gonna be important here is you're gonna put all of your auras into your bow and we're gonna go over all the steps that you need to fit Grace in. There's a very specific amount of RMR you need. If you do not have all of it, you're not going to be able to turn on grace. The first things first is you're going to need a level four in lane. It's going to be the most expensive part of all this. If you can't afford a level four in lane, instead of running grace, just run Herald of Ice and a Vitality until you can't afford a level four in lane. But as soon as you have one, you also need to get RMR on a jewel anywhere. This is why I recommend getting a spell damage leech's energy shield jewel and recrafting it for RMR. With this, you're also going to need RMR as a Eldritch Implicit and you're going to need RMR as a essence roll on your helmet. So if your helmet does not have this, you're going to have to recraft it. If you want to keep the spell suppression, you can look for a fractured spell suppression helmets or maybe you can look for fractured life or whatever you want and then simply just spam it with deafening essence of loathing until you hit it. Once you have RMR as an implicit and as a suffix on your helmets once you have RMR on a jewel and once you have level four in lane the only thing you're missing is to pick up the discipline has 25% increased mana reservation efficiency mastery and you will have enough mana depending on your level you're gonna have anywhere between five to nine mana left over and that is completely fine since we don't need any of that mana grace is a massive defensive layer and I really recommend as soon as you get a bow to prioritize this over anything else if we simply just look at grace it's any Anywhere between 15 to 20 percent of your effective hit pool depending on how much extra evasion rating you have on your other items if you're doing simulacrums for example this will make a massive difference in there as all the monsters and sims are monster level 75 even at the higher waves which means that evasion is going to do even better against them than it's going to do against tier 16 monsters Next up, let's talk about Watcher's Eye. If you want to upgrade yourself from a Hatred Conversion Watcher's and you're not really sure what to go for, there's a few options. You have both of the Malevolence Damage Over Time rolls, either the Ailment Steal Damage Faster or the Malevolence Dot Multi rolls. These are realistically the only things that we can put in here to just gain more raw DPS. And they're both about equal. They're about 7 to 8% increased DPS. Or if you want something very defensive, you can go for Determination Reduced Extra Damage from Crits. Crits in this game are super deadly, and this is one of the best defensive layers in the game. It just doesn't really get talked about much. If you want defensive watchers instead of the more offensive watchers, I'd really recommend this over anything else. Let's talk about a few minor changes to some of the gear that you can look forward to for a little bit more EPS. So the main thing to talk about here is Gloomfang. You want to look for a corrupted Gloomfang with either Hatred Aura Effect or Malevolence Aura Effect on them. Hatred is ever so slightly better. It's about 1% more DPS on a max roll versus Malevolence, but they're both very good. The thing that you want to be careful about on a corrupted Gloomfang is you need a very high projectiles that have chain deal non-chaos is extra chaos, simply because this roll is more important than the corrupt. If you have a really, really bad non chaos is extra chaos role, but you have a really good implicit, then it's not going to be a DPS upgrade over a good role and a bad implicit role. The best way to go about these is to simply just go look for them in trade and just copy paste them into path of building and look at the DPS increase. A well rolled Gloomfang should be about a four to five percent DPS increase and don't worry if it doesn't have charisma you can always anoint charisma on there yourself after. It's going to be a little bit more expensive since you'll need a tainted oil. For your ring what you could do is you could potentially look for a fractured ring instead. If you get either a fractured ring or a synthesized size, flammability on hit, implicit ring, then it's really easy to make a very, very good ring. One potential upgrade could be to use Essences of Horror 
and roll damage over time multiplier on your ring or you can simply just use a synthesized or fractured base to craft a really really nice ring with whatever other essences you'd like final thing to mention about gear is eventually you are going to want to upgrade your boots what we're looking for here is a hunter redeemer pair of boots and ideally you want to do this on a fugitive base simply because the chaos resistance is unbeatable and what we're looking for here is we are looking to combine a ignite to inflict deal damage faster with a increased effect of non damaging ailment pair of boots these two rolls together are a massive dps increase and you should be able to pull this off for about two to three div at most what you're hoping for here is to get an open prefix because if you get an open prefix you can do suffixes can't be changed and veil chaos orb until you get something good you can look for movement speed and then craft life or whatever else you might want to do with that but as long as you have an open prefix you can keep recrafting these until you get something you like or you run out of open prefixes to keep going as both of the roles that we really care about here are suffixes the final thing to talk about is going for a head hunter or a mage blood or which one should you get for this build so in my opinion after playing with both belts for quite a few days this season in my opinion head hunter just sucks not for ek just in general outside of five ways head hunter really does not feel very good right now and in my opinion for most builds and in most cases each blood is just better and that is most certainly true for ek head hunter feels okay the only good thing about it anymore is soul eater outside of soul eater everything else is just kind of garbage you aren't really immortal anymore with head hunter the arch nemesis changes in 320 kind of just remove that so it's more so just about going really fast and having soul eater mage blood on the other hand can give you quite a lot it makes you spell suppress cap a lot easier by having 19% spell suppression from a quartz flask. Let's get ailments avoidance in one roll as we discussed earlier. It lets you get chaos and res capped substantially easier. A chaos resistance flask will almost chaos cap you on its own and then a res suffix will basically res cap you without needing any other res rolls anywhere on your gear. Mage blood just fixes a lot of problems and just allows you to allocate a lot of these stats that might strain other pieces of gear onto your flask which allows you to min max substantially harder with better gear. If you want to go for head hunter, if you have head hunter, what I'd recommend is to use it as a stepping stone to farm a mage blood. Simply just use it, make the money, and then sell it later to be able to afford a mage blood. Mage blood allows you to min max this build substantially harder than any other piece of gear in this game. As for when you should stop upgrading your build and farming for them, I would honestly say if you have around 15 to 20 million DPS and if everything about your build feels comfy. If you feel tanky enough, if you feel like you're killing everything that you're doing fast enough, then it might be time to stop upgrading and just simply hard save. The last thing I'd like to mention is pushing this build even further. So your next goal with this build, assuming you finished everything in that path of building, would most likely be upgrading to an Explodey bow. I am currently the owner of the best Explodey bow for this build on 320. I do plan to recraft this bow later on to make it even more insane. I'm also the current owner of the best pair of boots for this build. So if you are interested in mirroring either of these, feel free to contact me either in game or on Twitch or wherever you'd like, and I can get you a mirror copy of them. I'm also in the process of making the best possible pair of gloves for EK. I've currently dumped 200 div into these gloves and we got very unlucky with it. But I do plan to finish this craft in a few days and then I'll be the owner of three best in slot items for this build my goal this season is to actually own every single best in slot item for ek so eventually i'll be making the best possible helmet and the best possible quiver for this build if you're someone who's interested in mirror tier items and interested in absolutely min maxing their build you're free to ask me whatever i have i'll be more than happy to provide mirror service outside of that that's everything we really need to talk about in this build if you have any more questions feel free to come by twitch i stream pretty much every day and i'm happy to answer your questions or feel free to leave a comment comments in the comment section on youtube and i'll try to get back to you as fast as i can i hope all this was helpful to you guys i hope this helped you min max your ek build a little bit more i've been absolutely loving this build and i've been loving playing it all season and i intend to stick with it for all of 320 and potentially even league start in 321 i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you guys in the next video